Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, and today we have another pro match commentary. This one was between Envious and Rogue in the grand finals of the Overwatch Rumble. That was a tournament that ended relatively recently. It was a great series, I, go su I suggest you go watch the entire thing, but this specific map, Gibraltar, was a little bit short. Rogue showed off a lot of really cool ways to use and abuse the map, and I thought it was interesting, and I would show you all. By the way, in case you didn't know, I have a second channel where I only do these. I stream it live, usually on Twitch, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday, tons of content. I always put it on YouTube as well. I'll link it down in the, in the description, so if you really like these Pro Match commentaries, go and check out my second channel. Tons of content there, I think you'll love it. Anyway, let's get into the video. Now, we just saw something that was important before even any action happened. So, we see that Nico decides, eh, should I switch? He's going towards the spawn, thinking about switching to something, but he doesn't. All right. So what does this tell us? Now, it's already 3 minutes and 30 seconds into the map, you can see right here. Oh, it's 30 seconds to the map right now. There's 3 minutes, 30 seconds on the time bank. It'll go down even 5 seconds further. So what's Rogue dur doing during this time? Are they just wasting time? Are they just not coordinated? No, of course not. Instead, they are scouting out what Envious is doing. They're waiting for the team to the team composition to populate on their tab screen, seeing where all the heroes are positioned. And so what do they see? All right, well... They just have one DPS. This is a triple tank composition for Envious. Sure, now they have a Roadhog. The Roadhog is very good at defending the back line. Good amount of peel. Plus, Winston can kind of serve that role as well. He can jump up onto the high ground. Uh, now, where is the positioning? So, Envious has a Soldier and an Ana up on the high ground. And then two tanks, the Roadhog and the Reinhardt, down on the low ground. There's a Winston floating around somewhere. But remember, Winston can leap, so he can do either of these things. And then there's also a Lucio rolling around somewhere. So there's actually not too much happening up here. It's just a Soldier and an Ana. Sure, they're pretty strong, but there could be a lot more. There could be a Zenyatta up there. There could be more DPS heroes up there. But it's just a Soldier and Ana. That's not too, too terrible. Plus, it's relatively risky. There's a Roadhog who can hook you from the low ground. There's a Winston who can dive and try to peel for you. Of course, Lucio is there as well. So right now, there's not a whole lot of reward for diving this high ground, but there's a lot of risk. And so even though that is the natural thing to do, just like, ah, oh, go dive the high ground, because if you look at Rogue's composition, it's all super mega death dive of doom. But what do they do instead? Okay, they go on the tanks, they go on the low ground, because that's where the bulk of Envious is. And all they do is they just put just a barely enough pressure onto Louis playing soldier, that he has to jump down, kind of be a little bit annoyed, and that gives enough time for the rest of Rogue to take out the front line. So we see Coco, the Reinhardt player of Envious, is the first to go down because Rogue focused him. And so, with this execution, Rogue was able to see, okay, this is what Envious is doing. Let's pick him apart this way. So great job by them. Pulse Bomb, by the way, we'll see this in the future as well, soon uses the Pulse Bomb to carry through the momentum. And this is so important on Gibraltar as Rogue will clearly demonstrate to us here. Now, why is Gibraltar such a snowballing map inherently? If you play it correctly like Rogue is, well, let's take a look. Normally, an even team fight would occur somewhere around here, with the defenders, of course, being on this side, and the attackers coming from here, and you can play with this, and you can play with the high ground on the ship, and it's relatively even, there's lots of nice dynamics, but if we're pushed all the way back here as the defenders, well, where can we even approach from? Pretty much only here and here. There's a door down here as well, but it's still pretty lame. So, uh, I mean, as the attackers, if we take if we take the ship, we can see both entrances, and then if we kind of put pressure on this, and then we come up, and we also have someone pressuring, we saw the Genji is pressuring this door, then how exactly do the attackers come through in any proper way? And so we saw soon use the Pulse Bomb earlier in order to finish off, of course, Coco on the Reinhardt, and get Rogue into this specific position. So you can see, Envious, is a, this is a concerted push from Envious. They are all coming through the doors at the same time, but they just can't quite break through. They even somehow got a Reinhardt, a Reinhardt up there off camera. I'm not sure how he got up there, but he really pushed through pretty heavily. He just walked all the way through the ship, I guess. And now you see Soon is pressuring this door, as, long, uh, as well as the Genji. No one can come through here. It's kind of crazy. And there we go. Rogue takes the point immediately with no uh, no contesting at all on the part of Envious because they use the momentum that Gibraltar provides you so, so well. And now, soon has another Pulse Bomb. 
presumably they would use this to get more momentum, but when you turn a corner on a rogue hog, there's always that chance he just one-shots you. Very sad. Unfortunate. So soon gets knocked out, but still, let's look at this next part of the map. Fortunately, they didn't need to actually use Soon's Pulse Bomb on Tracer to push this in, but this is even worse than the other part because now we just have two entrances, and neither of them are really high ground entr entrances either. They're just like this. This this particular entrance is the longer entrance, and this one is the shorter entrance. This this takes less time. But just uh, if you just camp this, it's pretty much impossible for the attacker, for the defenders rather, to push out without some sort of serious, uh, you know, lineup or advantage coming in. And as long as you have one person watching this to avoid any nasty flankers from the side getting out, it's not too much of a problem. And this is why Gibraltar is such a nice map for teams who can put on this sort of aggressive offensive pressure. And even though we see, okay, Envious has actually gotten out. Envious has gotten out. They are, you know, they're not choked out in these entrances anymore. But still, now you have the bridge. So if the attackers get the bridge, this is a severe advantage. And the damage on the Ana player was able to be followed out by Tracer. So Tracer took him down. And even though Nico didn't really get anything with the Genji Blade, that's okay. There's already such an advantage that the Ana was killed early on the Reinhardt as well, that Rogue was just able to take this through, win the fight, and now of course, of course, Envious can't push out of this now. I mean, there's a Pulse Bomb taking out any, everyone in the corridor. And so Rogue takes this with five minutes almost left on Time Bank. That's insane. And it's not, of course, because Envious is a trash team or because they really wrecked him. It's just that they really flawlessly used the map at every single juncture. So. That was uh, really spectacular, but there's still uh, Envious' offensive phase, so we'll take a look at that as well. So, here we are. Taimu is uh, on Hanzo, so this is pretty common. People will just pick Hanzo for like one second, usually to check this high ground over there to make sure there's no super aggressive cheese coming. But Envious already has a lot of mobility. They have uh, these two tanks, they have Genji, so they can easily check this no problem. They're more concerned with this area to make sure there are no sneaky tracers or genjis kind of hiding back there. And it doesn't indeed find soon on tracer. So, winds up getting a bunch of value. He's going to stay on Hanzo just to push these push these players back before swapping to soldier. But, nice play by soon and Nico combined. Dive him because they see he's a little bit out of position. Alright, that's fine. They kill him. 200, 200 ultimate charge, not a big deal. He's going to, uh, Taimu's going to switch off to soldier after this though. So, what's Rogue doing here? Rogue is being really aggressive. This seems kind of crazy. They definitely can't win this, right? Tracer has used the recall. She's even going to blink back in. Why not? Throw her life away. But it's okay. This is, again, Rogue kind of scouting Envious out, pushing them back. Look, we've already burned almost a minute. Hey, 50 seconds? That's not too bad. They've burned off of the clock. And because the card is so far away, and because this aggression forces Envious so far back onto the card itself, well, Rogue can just respawn, come back. These are two very mobile heroes, and so you see, by the time this cart pushes up, and by the time Envious is ready to mount another push, hey, everyone's already back. They didn't really lose anything for it. Something interesting to note, though, is that this lineup from Rogue is super mega greedy on the back line. And we can see that Envious, they notice it, they try to exploit it a little bit, but, well, I'll explain why. So they have a soldier, Anna and a Zenyatta, so there's no Lucio to peel for. It's just all backline, very vulnerable, squishy supports and DPS -y, uh, sort of stuff with no one to really peel. There's no Roadhog, there's none of that. Sure, the Genji can come up and he can fight too. The Winston can come up and he can fight too. Eh, it, you know, it works, but it's not a lot of defense considering how much backline Rogue actually has. And uh, so, obviously, this is going to be putting out a lot of damage. Envious needs to find a way to break it. And if we look at their composition right now, it's sort of halvesies. If you compare this to Rogue's earlier attack lineup, it's not nearly as aggressive. So instead of running a Tracer, they're running a Diva, And that right there is huge. But they could also even run a Tracer in this slot as well and be super, like, all-in dive to the maximum, right? They could also... Chips, uh, Chips Hyen is playing Ana instead of Zenyatta, so he can't project quite as much 
up, he can't discord up, he can't just throw a harmony orb on someone and let them go crazy in the back line. So this envious lineup is much more temperate. It's like, eh, it's okay, it's a little bit, a little bit more balanced. This will be more effective against a better variety of teams, but not this specific team, because Rogue, this is such a greedy backline team from Rogue. Envious needs to swap off to something a little bit more aggressive here. And we can see that although they have a lot of dive, you know, relatively, they, they have a relatively decent amount. They have the Winston, the Genji, they have the Diva as well. It's not quite enough to break this position because they're they're not quite going all in on it. And so despite having, you know, like I said, the Winston jump up, we're gonna see Nano Visor cleans this up pretty, pretty easily, but already one minute and 30 seconds. Wow, the time really burned down very fast. Rogue's good at doing this. Rogue's very good at manipulating the clock in this way. We'll skip ahead a little bit to this, uh, to the next team fight. And so Soon has a Pulse Bomb. Soon's really good with his Pulse Bombs, by the way. He's gonna land a really good one here. And that's just gonna shut down this entire fight, not allow the Nano Visor Soldier to do too much. This would have otherwise been a really good fight. They they forced wins on Zenyatta to use a very early Transcendence, and that's sort of the best you can do against Zenyatta, right? They took out the Winston very early on. So I think if not for Soon's really sick Pulse Bomb, Envious might have pushed through here. But, hey, it happens. So Taimu can't quite do anything. He gets taken out. This was kind of the last chance for Envious. Envious had to win it there. Look, they don't have enough tools now. If they couldn't break through with the Nano Boost visor, that really good angle, taking out the Winston so quickly, then I don't think that it's really possible for them to do on this, especially because they actually swapped off to a shorter ranged hero. They swapped off to McCree because they they saw Soon and Nico as the problems on the Genji and Tracer, when really the problem is this massive backline output that's coming out. Normally you don't have a, a Zenyatta and an Ana and a Soldier in the backline uh, just putting a ton of pressure on you. That's what's allowing Soon and Nico to be so effective. So while uh, the McCree is addressing the symptom of the Tracer and Genji kind of wrecking him, it's not addressing the real problem of, well, why is that? Because of all the support they have from the back line. So, still, a really cool map, a ton to learn from it, and this entire series, by the way, was really, really awesome. This was just the first map of the series, so I really recommend you guys go and check it out. Like I said before, if you enjoy me commentating on pro matches, please go and support my second channel. Check it out there every single day. Uh, well, Monday through Friday, I have Overwatch dailies that I stream live on my Twitch, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, and I always put those up on YouTube as well. So go check it out. Tons of content there. I think you'll really enjoy it. If you enjoyed this video, I'll link that down in the description. Check it out. It's also in my sub box on my channel. Anyway, never forget to stay positive and have a great day. See you soon, guys.